Life is hectic, demanding, and doesn't stop. When honest with ourselves, we must confess we often don't know what the hell we're doing. The LARCast is an ongoing conversation about the inclusive and mischievous nature of God's presence. Through the lens of all the things that make up this phenomenon we refer to as life. Astonishing grace and refreshing honesty collide right here for your weekly encouragement. Welcome back to the Lark Cast, fresh off of opening uh, week in the NFL. We both of yes. our teams won, man. They did. They did. In the words of my seven-year-old, B-U-C-C-A-N-E-E-R-S, go Bucks. Nice, dude. He literally like just walks around the house chanting that all day long. <laughs> That's sweet. That's sweet. I wish the I wish the Bears had like a nice chant like that. We just have this like freaking song from a you do have a cool song marching band from like 19 you know 28 or whatever yeah but when you hear it with people from chicago singing it it out it does sound cool man yeah just like a chant a chant would be great like soccer teams are like you know notorious for that they always they always have those like built-in you know cultural things um, but this probably won't surprise you. Even when we watch a game at my house, I have the Bears, the Bear Down song teed up on the speaker. So when I'm they score, surprised. dude, bam, I hit it. Bum, ba, dum, ba, dum, ba, dum, ba, dum, ba, dum, ba, dum, Bear Down, <laughs> Chicago Bears. <laughs> I'd love to hear like a group of like Chicago <laughs> firefighters sing that song. <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably go like platinum. <laughs> We're the pride and joy of the Illinois Chicago Bears. Bear down. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and say this, but you have like a look on your face right now where I feel like for 40 plus years you have wanted to sing that thing publicly. <laughs> A recording to be placed well, out my, the world. my whole neighborhood's heard it for sure. Well, you said you had 40-something people and 29 pounds of smoked meat at your house for the game yesterday. So, yeah, I bet. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good time. Not so much the first half. Not so much the first half, but. Yeah. Definitely a gritty yeah. defensive win for the Bears, which mm. is how we, which is how we are accustomed to it. We yeah. like it, um, but, you know, let's please get on to, to touchdowns. Yes. Indeed. Yes. Um, we're And speaking of getting on, too. Oh. <laughs> I was just kidding. Well, I was, like, trying to figure out a way to transition, and then, like, you came in with the transition. I deferred to your transition, and lo and behold, you didn't have a transition. No, man, you know me. There's a there's there's a a playful art in the world of, of transitions, man. Sometimes I, I feel like just making them awkward is the best approach. Just make it awkward on purpose. Be- better that up. awkward's better than polished. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. Like a snake dude. oil salesman at that point. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah whenever hey. something like really slick comes out or creative, even if it comes out of my own mouth, I'm like, uh Sorry, where did that come from? Okay, well, you got some stuff you want to say, so say it. How about Dude, I transition? do. I do. I got some things I need to get off my chest. Just kidding. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm just kidding. But in the in the in the midst of uh, of all the craziness, I just wanted to say to all of you listening, uh, those who have been with us and supported this podcast, those who are new the conversation um man good news is spreading dude it really is and there are new things in the work and lots of conversations that have been that have been happening and i just was thinking through a lot of those this past week and on a number of calls even over the weekend and just found myself grateful you know just grateful for that but one thing that has come up is hey man what's kind of going on in the world of lark because we're not exactly like known for our um our announcements on the podcast 
you know what I'm saying, right? Like you go to a podcast and there's always like a list of announcements, and updates, and da, da da da. We try to steer away from those. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna throw out some insights in like a one minute window, and we're gonna jump into James. So number one, check I'm, this out. Hold on, I'm hold on, dude. I'm timing this. You timing? I'm timing this. All right. Well, wait till I say number one. All right. All right. Hold on, dude. Hold on. All right. Go back to my. All right. You ready? To my pastor in church days when I was. Are you ready? Master of announcements. I think I got you on this order of service here for one minute announcements, <laughs> and I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start timing this thing. You ready? Yep. Okay, number one, finding that there is just no better place to see the God that we've been conditioned to miss than through a look at the, like an unfiltered look at the parables of Jesus, I decided to write a book on them. Yeah, Ooh. I did. So design work has begun. Uh, it's in editing, hoping to publish soon. Be on the lookout. Number two, Finding that there are various ways for people to jump into this conversation of grace, and it's not always easy to get started. We have three talks being produced by Catico Creative. Big shout out to Tony there. That does not go on my time limit because I gave you an endorsement. Um, so go back to my time. <laughs> These right, talks are going to be recorded, and they're coming out. Be on the lookout. We're also hitting the road because conversations are best. That's where people really learn. Reach out, larksite.com. Check out the tour button. Let us know who you are. We already have pl things planned for L.A., Philly, Atlanta, Austin, Tulsa, Chicago, Oklahoma City, different cities in Florida. We are coming your way. Reach out. One minute, four seconds. Dang, dude, that's pretty good, right? Good job. That was pretty good. good. Yep. That was There's good, just man. a little quick flash of some things that are happening. And, um... So yeah, folks, be on the lookout for those things. Thank you to all of you who have been supporting our efforts. You Seriously, your generosity is what makes all this possible. Thank you. And um, and if you're new and you haven't had a chance to jump in, go to LarkSite.com. Join the party, man. Join the party. None of this counts, by the way. These are all... No, it, ca no, it counts. I hit it again. Yeah, it you can't went count. From... No, that that wasn't went... an announcement. It was, that, that it was, was an... part of it. No, that had nothing to do with announcements. <laughs> no, that was part of it. No, that was a thank now you. Now you're to up our to audience. a you're now you're up to a minute no. sixteen. No, that, that was yeah. nothing but a thank you to our audience. <laughs> no, you're trying, to, you're trying to throw that <laughs> no. on me. Yes. Uh, -uh. Uh, you know, five seconds, eh? You know, but you, minute you can't 16. make thank yous announcements. You better tighten up. You better tighten up, Johnson. Hey, though, for real, congrats on uh, the book. That's great. I can't wait for that to come out. Um, mm. and yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, really yeah, sweet dude. to finally put something out that you've been working on for a long time. So excited about yeah. that. Okay. James jumping back in. This is going to be a short one today. We're in two or chapter one, five to eight and, um, a little bit of a tricky one because I've always loved how this verse starts out. Yeah. Um, it's one that, especially since, um, even starting a business, I found myself like really like clinging to this verse at various times. Uh, for those of you who, um, yeah, just life in general is hard. You need wisdom, yeah. um, building anything, starting anything, doing anything, whether you're a parent, business owner, just a person in general. And just life in general, you need wisdom. And it kicks off here and says, if any of you lacks wisdom, okay, that's me, hand raised. I lack wisdom. Mm. Let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. Meaning I'm going to give you wisdom and not quiz you on the front end of why I should give this to you. Yeah. You don't go through an application process with god yeah. there's no waiting period there's no let's see if i qualify for god to give me wisdom it's just let him ask of god he's a generous god he gives without reproach without quizzing without interrogation he just gives his kids who ask simply for wisdom he gives to them wisdom then we have a very sharp right hand turn 
that almost flips the car. It almost yeah. flips the car right after this. And he says, <laughs> yeah. But let him ask in faith with no doubting for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind for that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord for he is a double minded man and unstable in all his way. <laughs> I was scared. He was saying without laughing. Dude, dude, it's just like, wait, wait, what? So let me get this straight. I don't have wisdom. And I'm coming to you because I don't have it all together. Yep. I'm literally confessing in the asking of wisdom that I both don't have wisdom and don't have it together. And you are the person I need wisdom from. But I shouldn't doubt at all, at all in this process. Because if I do, then, well. You're out. You're done. Yep. And that's kind of how we've been sold it. Um, And so all of us are really trying to, like, pull ourselves together intellectually to not doubt, to not waver, so yeah. that we can get out of the God cookie jar, the wisdom and the answers to our prayers that we all seek. Yeah. It's like a part of the reason for probably why we're so addicted to thinking, you know, like why we ruminate constantly, always looking for ways to manipulate what we're thinking and feeling and saying and doing and looking for ways to manipulate others. And, and it's, it, I think it just comes down to, basically just a misunderstanding of what he means by doubting here mm -hmm. is what I'm thinking. Cause you know, it's like when we looked at in, in last, in last week's episode, right. From a few verses earlier, you know, when you, when you're facing trials counted as joy, right? Because there's something that's going on here. That's going to lead to your faith growing to a place of moving beyond just believing in Jesus to actually living with the peace of Jesus despite what comes your way because trials are inevitable mm -hmm. struggles are inevitable um in life so it's like okay amen amen and then from there i'm going yeah but when i'm suffering and struggling um that's when it's really easy to question god right that's when it's really easy to doubt like god's love for us we wonder where he is and if he's really for us and if he's really going to work through this trial um and so I think when you pair that with this verse, it's like, it makes it even more difficult because it's going, man, okay, so count on his joy and, but, you know, cause there's, there's something that's happening here. And, but now I'm wondering, like, is he really for me? Is he really present? Why am I going through this? Okay. So just ask for wisdom. He's going to give it to me freely, but damn it, don't doubt because if you doubt, <laughs> right, then it's, it's all lost. And yeah, it's like, okay. Lord, help me here. And I think it's in the asking for wisdom and looking at this through the lens of all that Jesus has said and done. It's going, oh, doubt, doubting here is not, it's a, it's not that intellectually you won't have those moments of, of vacillating back and forth as you struggle, right, in life. It seems to be more about moving your focus. Yeah. I think what yeah, James my, is saying it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just in my, you know, I, I dug a little and uh, the Greek word, I'm not going to really try to pronounce it. Um, but it's this idea of like wavering between options. It's less about intellectual uncertainty. And especially yeah. for James, like James, um, you know, for, th for three years, especially since, you know, Jesus came out and was in the temple, picked up the scroll in Isaiah and was like, I'm him. Yeah. Jesus literally showed up and I'm him, right? I'm him. God in the flesh, Messiah right here. <laughs> yeah. And there was all this controversy and people were trying to kill him. And like, you know, James was a late convert. Um, he didn't believe along with a lot of Jesus' siblings. Um, so he's wrestled through his intellectual uncertainty, even the disciples post resurrection. Mm -hmm. Jesus is literally standing in front of them, you know, and Thomas is doubting. I mean, famously said, unless I'll stick my, you know, my fingers in, in, in the holes of his hands. Yeah. I'm not going to believe. And he appears to them. Um, he speaks with them, cooks a breakfast and they're still doubting. 
It said some of them doubt it, you know? Um, so, I mean, like these are like really wild things, you know, resurrection, uh, a God that you can't see a God that transcends time and space. Um, yeah. you know, th there's so many different factors that, you know, lead into intellectual uncertainty. How about just like the theological mumble jumble that's in all of our brains, and especially those of us who have grown up in churches, you know, most of my doubting, you know, in prayer is all this like theology in my head about like mm -hmm. God's sovereignty and God's control. And I'm like praying and I'm like, well, what if that's not like, you know, his will and like, what about this? Yep. And so you're like, you're praying instead of just asking simply like a kid yep. would you're like running through all these like scenarios. And if it goes this way, I'll totally trust you. And you're still good. And if it goes this way, like I'll totally, you know, like you're just like, dude, most of my like doubting in prayer is, you know, just from probably over education, over theologizing, but it's yeah. less about intellectual uncertainty. The idea is wavering between options. And I can't help, but think James, that's is just the key. saying, dude, just know he's trustworthy and just know that this is your best option. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, what benefit is it to you is I think is what James is getting at here. What benefit is it to you? If, <laughs> if what you're asking isn't even in a line with him and who he is. Right. So if, if you're doubting in accordance to like what the word actually means here means that you are wavering between, talking to you know coming to Jesus and talking with him about this and leaning upon him in this versus moving all of your moving you know the the your entire focus onto something else as a means for how to move through this mm -hmm. well well what benefit would that be to you right i don't feel like he's like dropping the hammer on us as much as he's saying like do the math do do you see where putting your faith in on this object over here is never going to actually lead to anything that only Jesus can do, which is actually over here. Mm -hmm. So again, I think it's very needed to understand what you brought up, man, that it really does come down to wavering it. Um, yeah. And the least... whole con, yeah. The context too is wisdom. You know, you gotta be mindful mm -hmm. of that. It's not like just these like general sort of like, prayer request kind of thing like hey man like my mom's really sick or like dude like we got you know just a just life's just tough you know scenarios yeah. um it is in the in the category of of wisdom um and just like later on it, it, you know james is going to talk about he's a father above who loves to give good gifts mm -hmm. um and i just came back to this idea of just the simplicity of just dumb simple childlike faith man yeah 100 percent. it's uh how a kid would ask a dad for where's the last juice box or can you get me this you know or like can you get me this out of the mm -hmm. pantry or can we can we go to the candy store today or like whatever it is yep yeah so and don't waver in that because if you go to someone else who doesn't who doesn't have a juiced box and doesn't know where it is? Yes, <laughs> it won't be or any value. To, it won't be any to value you to you. Exactly. Totally. It's, again, it just comes down to some pretty simple mathematics there, and and the whole scenario really reminds me of uh, of Peter um, in the boat, right? And that story that we find in Matthew chapter fourteen, where you know the disciples are out sailing and they're in the midst of a storm, and they see Jesus, right? You know, out on the water, and they get terrified. And, you know, Jesus speaks to them, right? Like a word of comfort. Like he says to him, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. And um, I think it brings a calm to a group of very terrified dudes. Uh, but but Peter, <laughs> right, wants proof. He, he wants proof. And he puts the burden of proof on Understandably Jesus. Understandably so. Yeah. And so Jesus tells him, right, get out of the boat. Walk on the water. Come on, man. And, um, you know, we all know the story, right? Peter's right. Like he, he finds himself basically being blown and tossed by the wind, as James says, mm -hmm. right? Because he has taken his eyes off of Jesus, which is what you're talking about. The wavering. It wasn't, 
It's not an intellectual doubt. It's not that um, that all that mumbo jumbo that runs through your mind endlessly while you're praying. And by the way, I love that you brought that up because that is just so spot on, dude, even in my own right experience. Like you would find yourself going, okay, Lord, I'm sorry now that I've repeated myself too much because you said not to be repetitive. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, shoot, I'm <laughs> effing it up. Like Chris Farley interviewing, you know, oh uh, my God. old SNL skits. A hundred percent. He's just hitting himself in the head. He's like, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, um, that's not what he is referring to here. He's talking about, again, what you see here with Peter. It's, it's moving your focus, your faith from the object of him who can only deliver onto the circumstances that you're facing and onto yourself or onto someone else to try to be what only Jesus can be. Mm -hmm. And so we see, right, Peter, man, he sinks, right? Like the, the, the danger lied. The danger did not lie in the circumstances around Peter. The danger lied in where he decided to fix his eyes, which was on those things. And of course, you know, as we, as we look at that story, you find some comfort as we notice, like it, it, it ends with, with Jesus not saying, Peter, get it together. Let's go. Stop being double-minded. But instead we see Jesus standing above Peter who's afraid, right. Yeah. And picking him, picking him up, man. It's, um, it's a, it's a beautiful reminder as we look at, at this passage in James that Jesus does not leave us right? And our trials, the trials are, are real. Um, the wind and the, and the waves are strong, but, um, but the Jesus who walks on the water, right. will never leave us or forsake us. He said, yeah. So uh, I think what James is saying is fix your eyes then on him. Mm -hmm. Don't be double-minded and expect that running to someone who doesn't have a juice box and cannot get one for you is somehow going to deliver. It's a fool's errand. Yeah, sometimes too. I like how um, James uses the word receive, which could be like, it, it obviously could play into the whole paradigm of like, yeah. you need to ask in the right way with no doubting or you won't get it. Um, yeah. But, you know, so we've said so many times on this podcast, faith isn't a thing that like accomplishes anything. It yeah. more just gives us eyes to receive and enjoy what is mm -hmm. so like for instance you know the kingdom we always talk about like the kingdom like building the kingdom but hebrew says the kingdom is something we're receiving meaning yep. it's a movement of the king it's something he's doing uh which is really the whole book of acts is just all of these other players sort of responding to what god is doing in their midst so the king already there yeah it's already there yeah or it's unfolding you know um and so the kingdom is something that we're receiving. Faith is the discovery of what is. I think if your eyes are in different places, your options are open. Um, you're relying on yourself. You're relying on your networks. You know, you're relying on your own resources. If your eyes are in other places, dude, the God could be doing something really, really cool right under your nose. Mm -hmm. But because you don't have a singular focus, you can't receive it. You can't see it. You can't enjoy it. You uh -huh. can't be thankful for it. Um, or maybe you might attribute it, you know, to something else in your pride, man, I made that phone call. I reached out to that dude. Like, you know, I got active on, you know, emails or whatever. And I kind of like, I made a way, mm -hmm. um, when maybe in reality, the, the, the thought, um, to reach out to a certain person or whatever, and the timing, you know, was all on him. And so you can, in your pride, rejoice in something that you think yeah. you did when in reality it was God, you know, at work and you just weren't able to receive that and be grateful, but rather in pride, you started, you know, you get yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, man. And, and in every one of those scenarios, right. It, it either comes down to you, you fixing your eyes, right. Placing your faith in who Jesus is or wavering and thinking that there's some other option out here. And depending on where you land, it's, it's going to depend on what you're able to see and to enjoy and to recline and to receive, right? Yeah. As you said, and it's it's so true, man, because 
<clears throat> when you when you pull back even from there, I feel like you can you can look at the the whole I feel like the scenario that you see here with James and even go even further with it and see why the emphasis is placed on faith in who Jesus is because when that is the case, not only are you free to come to him as you've read and uh, and ask who gives freely, but you also will be freed up to just come to him and ask these things because you're not going to be bogged down in the constant what ifs that surround this idea that I feel like, which is what really um, hinders, I feel like the simplicity of this text is thinking that, well, if God is so good, then these things wouldn't be happening. Or because God is good, right? Then you all of a sudden you start looking for ways in which you have to be faithful to make things happen because yeah. he's good. And yeah. because, you know, you want to be that grateful person. I'm just saying there seems to be a lot of confusion about who God is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there's confusion about why he came. Like, I mean, it's pretty plain with Jesus. I came to set the captives free. Now, we could all say, well, everybody, there's people all over the world that aren't free. Well, no, there are people all over the world who are living in the slavery of their delusion. Yes. But Jesus has come and set us free in the sense that we have all that we need to see, to see mm -hmm. that we're actually not slaves to this religious God that we had in mind. Yep. We've actually been loved all along by this gracious God that he came to reveal. What I'm getting at is if you miss that, right? you misunderstand like his his death on a cross and the role that it plays in creation in the scene of the father for who he is then you can start to attribute a lot of things in life to what you think god is and should be like and what he shouldn't be like and what should be in your life because of this and what shouldn't be allowed to be in your life because of this and now all of a sudden you start to get down a little bit further into the scenario and you're going ah oh, man now I kind of see why in my, and I'm speaking from personal experience, why I've been double-minded in my life. It wasn't this intellectual wavering as much as it is that I was struggling, dude, because my faith was straight up in a God that didn't exist. Sure. Not the God that Jesus revealed. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm, I'm pursuing him in a way and, and try and performing in a way to achieve this desired outcome that should be in my life because I'm so faithful, by the way, you know what I mean? yeah. yeah. Or hoping to get there. Yeah. And just completely missing the fact that no, he's actually there. He's present. He loves you. And you could just come to him and just ask for wisdom in the midst of this, knowing that wisdom and peace might be all that you get. And it might end poorly on this side of the curtain. Mm-hmm. And wisdom, but it's know, not maybe. the end of the story. Is wisdom, yeah, right? Yeah, and a lot of times wisdom is just a perspective, you know, in the midst yeah. of it, a perspective that enables you to receive, to receive the good that's there. And if your if your eye was in a different place, you might pass over it and just not see the gems that are right there, the good things that he's done. Or you might drift into the pride thing, you know thinking that yep. you did it. But I love that James brings up wisdom because as most of us know, like when, when you get past like high school, you know, even middle school, it's not really like yeses and nos and blacks and whites. It's just like black and white yeah. as in terms of, I'm not talking about people. Um, but um, <laughs> just this is so we're clear. <laughs> things the times that we are, live in. Things the times that are black in. and white, please don't cancel me. Um. But, uh, man, wisdom is needed, you know, and a lot of times it's not really clear, you know, what is yeah. right, what is wrong. And wisdom is that other like category yeah. in life. That's just so, that's just so needed. You know, situations are tricky, yeah. real tricky and you need wisdom. And dude, I'm like, <laughs> I, I ask for it. Ask free, time. ask freely. I'm telling you, man, like as, you know, um, and I when you're like asking, I, you know, Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you know, like owning this business, I feel like I've asked for wisdom so many times, dude, like more than ever. 
in my life and you know stuff and now is, all your employees are questioning the god that you said <laughs> <laughs> you mean my former employees <laughs> <laughs> so true <laughs> I've been there, dude. And here I yeah. am all by myself. I'm, I'm sure there's a wake of people that work with and for me. But yeah, sometimes we don't hear it well. But amen, dude. Yeah. Too but I'm with you, right? I, I think that's it. But that's, the, I mean, we laugh at it. But the, the beauty is that. All right. Hey, really quick before you get in, you're wrapping this up. So you're wrapping the podcast up. So I'm going to time your wrap up to keep, oh, on, okay. par, keep on par with the, with the podcast. Timer's yes. going, by the way. Timer's going. I was just saying that I think for you, just seeing seeing God for who He is, seeing Him through Jesus's eyes is is what really sets you free to come and ask freely, and to trust right in His presence in the midst of it, despite the outcomes that we don't have any control over. And so I'll just close with this, and it's a it's a quote from Cape, and it's it's not one that you often hear, but it's one that I was reminded of thinking about this. Yes, Cape quote. And uh, go. he said, here's the thing. When God finally shows up in Jesus, his much heralded, heralded, hey. his much heralded coming to put all things to rights ends badly. And I just feel like, man, that's so important to just remember that again, who it is that we're asking for wisdom from in the midst of our trials. That plays the key factor in all this. Mm. He says, when the invisible hand that holds the stars finally does its triumphant restoring thing, it does nothing at all but hang there and bleed. I'm like, dang, he's so true. He, Jesus just hangs there and bleeds. Yep. That may well be help, Capen says, but it is not the Band-Aid creation expected in the mythical God that they've had in mind all along. Mm. You see, the only way it makes any sense what who Jesus is and what he's done, the only way it makes any sense is when it is seen as personal, when we are helpless, there he is. He doesn't start your stalled car for you. He comes and sits with you in the snowbank. Mm. Now, you can object to that. Okay, you can object to that and say that he should have made a world in which cars don't stall. But you can't complain. He doesn't stick by his customers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. When that's the God we have in mind, mm -hmm. then it's really easy to freely come to him who freely gives wisdom in the midst of our trials. And we don't have to be double-minded and like Peter and move our focus to the struggle mm. or to someone that we think will, will deliver what they can. Despite yeah, dude, what we go through, he's there. It's so that's good. the point Two well, that was two minutes and 45 seconds, which was great. pretty good, but it's like, that's a good little, a lot, of, a lot of times it's like, we, we have these categories, you know, what we expect. And the point you make is so good. It's like, we have to understand who he is and how he has worked. He never delivered on the expectations that we thought we needed. Yeah. You know, here's this military leader, this geopolitical leader that's going to get Israel back to the days of, you know, David, and it's going to be a, a national powerhouse with a big army and overthrow Rome. And he just like, just lays there and bleeds. Yeah. And this is rescue. This is salvation. And a lot of times we're over here, like, you know, we're thinking like God, like we're in the category of one, two, three, but he's over here in ABC. Yep. It's just totally different. So while yep. we're asking for raises, spouses, and healings, you know, he's giving friends food and gratitude. You know, yep. it's just like, it, it's, you know, so if your eye is divided and not singular, man, there's probably some really, really good things he's working on behalf of everyone listening to this podcast and probably our neighbors who don't even know him, um, but yep. we can't see it because we don't have the eyes of faith to receive the goodness of a father who gives good gifts. Yeah, so with a peace that surpasses understanding that Jesus said we have, 
and the rest we have because of who he is and who we are now in him we can ask and watch and what happens happens he's good in the midst of it and there's peace and to that cheers Thank you.